Hello there, stranger. Oh. Having some troubles traversing the wilds. <sighs> Stupid woodland. It's so difficult to get through, right? Hmm. I see. You, sir, are in need of a good stick. Stick? A stick, yes. So, as in a walking stick. Walking staff, stick, stave, whatever you name it. Hmm, I don't know. I'm just perfectly fine without a stick. No one that ventures into the wild goes so without a good stick, sir. Come on, follow along. First and foremost, you want to look for a perfectly straight shoot. But beware not to choose any endangered species or don't choose dominant trees. Um, so choose trees that don't have any chances of growing to a large tree. So ideally choose a, choose a coppice um, so it can regrow its shoot later or choose a tree that lives under the canopy of a larger tree. Which species you choose is also very important. It varies from where you live from place to place, but here are a few examples. Ash trees are medium weight, so, and they represent the Spear of Odin. The Spear of Odin um, in Norse mythology is made from an ash tree. That's a cool fact, I guess. Rowan trees are very lightweight and easy to handle, and uh, they symbolize protection in folklore. Be careful if you want to choose an oak tree, because it's very heavy weight. Um, it also symbolizes endurance and strength, it's not without reason, they are very heavy. Last but not least, we have hazel tree. They are very lightweight and easy to handle as well, and they represent wisdom. Um, and last, my stick is made of a Scots pine, it's made of pine tree, and they represent durability, um, immortality, and yeah. There are like some mid-weight range um, sticks, so they are very sturdy. Now that I found my stick, it is time for the barking. I keep it at length so I can cut off eventual cracks forming while drying. There is one thing I forgot about pine trees though. Yeah, like the turpentine really got onto my hands. I should have known and bring gloves with me, but yeah, anyway. After I left it to dry for some days, it's time to make it at length. Generally, you want something that's below the chin and just above the chest. If you want to go for the Gandalf look and leave it a bit longer, be my guest. Now that our stick is at length, we can start working on it a bit more. The stick I chose was a bit wide, so I had to cut off a lot of material, like a lot. You probably want to choose like a thinner stick. Slowly but surely, it's starting to look more like the perfect stick. Right down to some sanding to remove any splinters and fine tune some more. After you've done that, just take it for a spin because it's fun, I guess. Now, for the finishing touch, we round up the edges to prevent it from cracking in the future. Now carve a slight point where the alpine stick will go. Next, you want to carve a little ridge where you can tie things together like a tarp, cordage or just some decorations. Finally, to the good stuff. I decided to engrave some ancient Viking runes into my staff. I translated an old Norse saying coming from ancient sagas. In English it says, Early shall rise he who wants to have the riches of another man. A resting wolf surely gets no food, nor does a sleeping man achieve victory. It was my first time engraving something with wood burning. It was a bit sloppy, but I'm happy with the result. Now it's time to put the alpine spike on the stick, this to protect it from splitting when it hits the ground. It also greatly increases the lifespan of your staff. 
To protect it from the elements and eventual rotting, I used an ancient technique coming from Japan. You basically burn the wood and make sort of like a barrier so no fungi can enter. It also looks really dope. You can finish your stick with some olive oil and you can finish your stick with some olive oil for the same reason if you want. And so my stick was ready. Finally able to be used. So, now that your stick is ready, you can go and have some nice adventures. But never forget your stick, right?